this world, and, and I wouldn't see them. You know, stock market with the New York Stock Exchange. You know, <coughs> go ask them for help. Yeah, we we got this overwhelming debt. Is there any way that you can you know refinance? You know, get something done to help us out. You know, brilliance. You know, they're brilliant minds out there, financial experts, wizards, and maybe they they can, you know, partner up with that uh, exe uh, uh, event center. You know, <coughs> privately, we own half. They get half. You know, and they can they can generate some revenue that way. Maybe to make the first two payments until we can figure it out. It's all about figuring out things. Getting us to buy time. We'll buy the time. But we'll work on it. I mean, it's private too. We'll, you know, we'll, we'll find ways. We've got to. We have no other choice, right? There'd be no other choice but to find ways to get this done, to get it paid. Because you're going to lose a, a valuable sort of resource that we have constructed there. It's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful building. We're not just not using it right. Find ways to use it. Ad hoc committees. What does it take? As to that, uh, thank you, Jim. That was pretty good. I assume you're Jim. I hear a lot of people. Jim, would you repeat the question? <laughs> <laughs> well, the question specifically was what consideration I failed math. will you make in the refinancing of that debt as a counselor or the dealing with that debt? I would work with the staff, the rest of the council, and looking at it very carefully as to what is it going to cost us to refinance that debt. If we're if we're if we have a low bond rating, it's it's going to cost us more. I think is the way that works. I'm not sure. I'm, I'm not a wizard when it comes to banking. But I think we need to look at it very carefully as to how the debt is refinanced. That's, that's what we need to do as stewards of our, of our city for the citizens of the city. That's my best answer, Jim. I take it that I'll, I'll probably go back and ask you, Jim, what would you have to do? <laughs> um, but uh, I think that uh, what I would do, uh, I would get with the city manager, because that's her job. Even though it, was, it wasn't her problem, but she inherited the problem, and see what her decision would be and try to work with her and of course the city council where we could uh, save uh, ourselves from going down the wrong way and trying to you know get the money to either finance or find you know I know everything costs money to, to either get a, a, a counselor or, or advice but you know um, the situation is going to be facing us and we're going to have to have a, a, a solution to it but I, I think that um, um, we would have to look around and see all, all the way across, I'm, I'm talking about different, uh, like the police department, the fire department, uh, the budgets that we have and stuff like that, to be able to either um, come up with a solution. Because um, it's like a business, you know, your, your, your um, credit rating start going down and then eventually nobody wants to give you credit. And I think that's, that's, that would be the very, uh, very important. That, to see what would be our options to be able to, to, to save our rating, because that's what we you know we have to do. Um, I don't know if there's any banks out there that would let us or refinance it, but um, I'll tell you one thing that um, Ms. Uh, Martinez, Gloria, she has a big responsibility up there too. So she probably would have to be on, a, on some type of a quota that that Civic Center has to be 24 seven going you know, to be able to bring some revenues. Because, um, you know, we can't be pointing fingers. We can't say, well, it was so-and-so that did this, or so-and-so did this. We, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a something that we have to take and, and, and take it, um, you know, as it comes. That's, that would be my best answer. Thank you, Tom.
my, my concern is not the refinancing it or the cost of, of refinancing it, but being not repeating ourselves in five years saying, uh oh, we didn't know how we were going to make this payment. You all said, you all talked about being proactive, you talked about short term lists, mid term goals, long term goals, setting priorities, and master planning. This current council, or this current administration over the past three years, has accomplished several great things for our city to set the stage for master plan. Uh, a water model has been completed. A sewer model has, uh, has been put on the plate. A growth plan ha has been completed so that we know where our water lines are and where they need to be fixed. And, and from the MS engineering study, although five, six years old now, it identifies priorities in street maintenance, okay? Uh, we know where we're growing. We're growing up that 181 corridor, okay, up and over the hill, okay? What are your views of master planning? And, and maybe a little bit more detailed as to doing that. You know, I saw the, the m and engineering plan and it said, oh, well, we need to uh, repair our streets but it provided for no timelines, it provided for no costs or no funding sources, okay? Uh, so to me, that wasn't a plan, it was just oh, a wish list, okay? Uh, the other thing that the city has is an insolvency plan that provides for some longer term budgeting coming up in the future. How are you gonna utilize those things as council members to set your priorities and, and develop short and long term goals or, and, Maybe a real master plan. Start with That's a good question, Jim. But if you go on my website, you go and read there that I have a 10-year vision. And on there it says that um, the city can go one way, but it's almost like we all have kids or grandkids or nephews or whatever. And they're born and everybody's got plans for them. And then when they turn nine years old, they don't want to play baseball, they want to play soccer. But dad wants them to play baseball because he was a baseball player. And it's basically the same thing with the city here that, that I'm looking at. You know, the master plan, you know, we, we can, they, they have the plan right now, but are we going to be able to follow it? Or, I mean, let's say everybody from California moves over here, people move into Floresville. The plan is going to have to, as we go, it's going to have to change because we can't, you know, we just can't. Um, I mean, it's like a guideline that we have to, you know, just do what what is best you know, as far as the surveyors and all those people. Because I think that the city manager is, is that's what she's going, you know, she's been doing working with the master plan, and, and and we have to review it and we have to look at it and be able to say, you know what, um, maybe. We need to expand this area a little bit. Or maybe we need to change the master plan, deviate from there a little bit. But uh, the tier um, master plan, I, I, I say that it's, it's gonna, uh, in five years it might change. We might grow so fast because the old boom and stuff like that and get more families over here from other or other states or other towns. And and that's, that's I think that's, that would be, because I haven't really haven't looked at the master plan right now that's going on right now. I looked at the one that was back a year or two years ago. That's what I have. Any plan, whether it's your own, for your, for your household, for the city, for a business, whatever, one of the biggest key ingredients is how are you going to pay for it? What is the revenue stream to be able to finance a project? When, uh, when I was city manager in, in Stockdale, we brought our, our water rates up to, uh, up to par. And with some study and help from the USDA, we discovered that that would allow us for a USDA loan to build a major road right through the north of town, taking the 18-wheelers out of Main Street and running them through the industrial park. It was just, it was 
just really good planning that made it all happen. But that's what you need to do. You need to figure out where the money's going to come from. You know, winners never quit. And uh, I know that we're going to be facing a, a the Civic Center um, big bond, but I personally would give it everything I could to save it. I wouldn't sell it. I would not. Okay? Was it either or? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yes or no? No. 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 I would prefer. I would prefer to take the time and the effort to market it correctly, market the town, do better, do bigger, save it, make it work. I've already talked to two people about this from other towns that have done it, so I know it's possible. No, I wouldn't sell it. That was a good question. You know, if that's one of the options, you got to be open to those options. But first, I would seek the, you know, the consensus of what the people want to do in that. And you know, the majority rules, you have to answer to, you know, you have to go with what the people say. And, uh, the master plan, bring me back to the other question. <laughs> it was able to fit on the screen of the computer.
I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, a strong leader is a, a person that doesn't give up, a person that looks for ways to solve the problems, and a person that just finds the easy way out and says, it can't be, it, it can't, we can't do it. That's, that's my perception of a strong leader. And I say that because, again, it goes back to the military. You know, you never, never, never give up. Thank you. That's right. That's it. Good leaders, don't quit. Keep smiling. They find a solution one way or the other. And keep it right on going. Don't look back. Thank you. I think uh, strong leaders come from the fundamental, uh, fundamental belief that they they do. They have with the inner self that they do on the private way, private. You know, and they're by themselves, and they develop themselves in their own little ways, and they they reach out to a to something that's that's something far uh, superior than any of us here. So, and they ask for wisdom, and mainly the wisdom, so that they can be able to have the right words and the actions that that will go according to what in, 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 in accordance to the way that things should, should be for the betterment of. Uh, a strong leader is basically having faith, okay? I get down to it. Trying to escape the issue. It's just, you know, try to keep government separated from other things, but it's not true. You ask God to give you the wisdom. There you go. There it is. And then you can become something strong. Amen. Do we have any further questions from the audience? Yes, sir. One quick question. Sounds like you all agree on what needs to be done, that that is not, has been done so far. And all of you want the growth of the city. Okay. It's true that the city owes money. It's true that we have debt. It's true that we need funding. We need funds. We need money. How do, how do you propose to raise money? How do you propose to make money? You're not going to sell the civic center to pay the debt. What is it that you're going to do to bring funds to pay? The bills are being paid. So we're really not insolvent. The budget is being met, okay, but the big debt may have to be restructured. So what is it that you're going to do to bring money to the community? Are you going to raise taxes? Are you going to raise water rates again? Are you going to do something different? What is it that you're going to do? Each one of you has a vision. Mr. Grove, you have your motto on your sign, vision for, for Floresville. How are you going to fulfill that vision, you know, each one of you? How are you going to make money to fulfill that vision? That's the question. We'll start with Frank. Can I ask you, ask you, ask you the question? Yes, All right, for each one of you. No, but who are you? What, are you a councilman? Yes. You are? Yes. Oh, okay. Well, you raised our water rates, right? Yes, we did, because we need money. Oh, oh because that was your solution? Well, how That was your solution. So you're asking the city councilman for a solution. The question is for you, sir. Okay. How right. do you propose um, to raise money? Yes, uh, uh, I don't know. I'm not, I'm, not a, I'm not on city council. I don't know the ways of the city council, but I'll learn. And I'll work with what we have. And I'm not going to impress. And I'm not going to oppress the people anymore with what they, what, what, with more rates, more taxes. That's for sure. That's one thing I won't do. But uh, there's ways. We have to go and find out once the, once the person is there, then he can start to work. Roll up the sleeves and get after it. That's my answer. Thank you. Can anyone else be specific about how to raise money? <laughs> <laughs> I 
shotgun and a mask. Miss <laughs> 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 Castillo, I've I've uh, I've really been thinking about the event center. That that to me is is a real challenge. I like that one. I, I think that could be could be turned into a almost probably profit making center and a and a a method of bringing tourism and business to the city. Over and above all these other things of infrastructure and so forth. I think I think if we were to really work hard at marketing the event center and our town, that that is the way we're going to not only make money, but we're going to become more well known across the state, across the United States. I think Floresville is just perfect. I think it's wonderful. And I think we need to market it. Ms. Castillo, I don't know what to say, but I have a few, a few thoughts here going to my mind. It's all military, but anyway, it's going to my mind. But my question, um, or my answer to your question, and maybe it's wrong, do you think that Mr. Tahala has a, a solution to that? I'm not asking him. I'm no, I'm just asking, because he's not here. And it's, I don't think it's fair for these councilmen to come up with that question. But... The, the, the question to that, um, you know, there's, there's different ways to raise money, but the thing is that, you know, we, we, can't, we just can't make plans um, on the spot of the, of the moment. And you know as well as I do that the baseball field that they're trying to uh, finance, there was no money and they still want to finance it. And, and we lost a lot of money on lawsuits, right or wrong, because the Okay, but, but see, that's what I'm saying. That, <laughs> but that's what I'm saying. But, you know, the thing is that we have to spend the money wisely. All that money could have been used toward the civic center. But now we're in the hole. And now you're putting us in the hot seat. How are we going to raise money? And there's a lot of ways we can raise money. But we have to figure, and, and the city council and the city manager, and, of course, Gloria, I say Gloria because she's running the Civic Center. She needs to get some big paddles and start saving in the flow or it's one way or the other because you know what? I, I'm determined that we can make money by having activities. And instead of saying, you know what? Let's use the register and, and put the money there. Let's sell tickets for beer. Because you know every event that you go to, you end up at the house with five or six tickets. And that's money that is going to go towards the city. We have to use our, our mind and, and, and figure out how are we going to, you know, make money. How, you know, we going to get money from people. You know, there's a lot of projects that we have, but the people just don't want to help out. They're tired. They're tired. Their taxpayers' money is going in the wrong direction. And, and I personally think it's not, a, it's not a fair question, but we have to figure out how we're going to come up with the money. Thank <laughs> you. 
But I do agree that we're not being very proactive with the Civic Center. We're not putting, we're not using the Civic Center to the max. Because we have a lot of oil field companies out there that they've been using the Civic Center. And I can guarantee you, we have a luncheon with all those people and tell us their situation, there will be some help. But you will at least study that. Yes, yeah, yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, let's study. Yes. Yes. Yes, ma'am. I would just like to ask one question about this panel and the coming up city council. Over the years, I know that you've all said that you'd be willing to work with the county and the city and that you're going to try to work together. One of the things that Floresville has really lost the ball on is heritage tourism. We have so many wonderful uh, historic events that have happened here. And over the years in coming to city council, I have been told that nothing historic ever happened here. We are so rich in the history of this area and the history of the Alamo and San Antonio and the San Antonio River. We have the San Antonio River Authority. Uh, we have the World Heritage. We have the National Park Service that has tried over the years to get some cohesive, um, what do you call it, uh, cooperation between the city and the county to at least try to write our congressman try to help us to get some more funding down here in this area that we have to be interested in before they're going to come forth with any of that. And we've not ever really been able to present a package together to get that done. <coughs> and, and my one uh, question, uh, again, is a yes or no, would, would you just be willing to work towards getting more of the historic tourism coming to Floresville and have perhaps like a uh, historical commission that works with the council to look at all of the uh, different historic sites that we have and how we can best get other people interested in those. We did a lot of that with Main Street. We had some little bit of uh, uh, you know, success with that. We just need more. And we need to have the county and the city working together to help us to get that type of people here in this town. We have a wonderful opportunity. We have the new hiking and biking trail. We have the first signage in the state of Texas on a hiking and biking trail in almost uh, all the way to Louisiana. We're the first. San Antonio just did there after hours. They're second. We've been first in so many ways, but yet we don't market our first. We don't market what we have. And so I guess I'd just like to have you nod your hand and say, yeah. We, we really need to work on that. And can y'all nod your head and say that? Or do you want to say no? You can shake it yes or no. But it, it's an opportunity that we have always over, well, we haven't overlooked it. We've just not developed it. And I think that's what we need to do to help fill that civic center, to help get people into the area, to put heads in the bed, to have some you know, advertisements going on. So this is what we really need to do is work together to get these things gelled. Thank you. Do we have any affirmation from the candidate? May I? Yes, sir. Moana, you were, you were part of this. Uh -huh. during, during Main Street, yeah. I started seeing uh, National Main Street publications come across my desk where towns had taken abandoned railways and turned them into hike and bike trails. I presented this to the Main Street Board and to the council and everybody was shaking their heads yes. Monica Flores found the grant to where we could do it, and we actually built that trail back during the Main Street days. And just recently, it, like Loana said, it was dedicated as the first nationally recognized trail in the state of Texas. That's how good we are. Thank you. Yes, let's do it. All right. I have heard about some of the streets here were back with the 10th Street. They needed payment. And they decided they were going to have some kind of check. When they did check, they found some leaks in there. So instead of fixing the 10th 10, 10, 10 Street, they came back and went five streets more. Instead of having 10 now, they got 15 streets. So they, they got leaks in, 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 with the sewer lines broken. 
And they wanted to pave the streets, but somebody said, no, nope, we gotta fix those holes there in the ground first. I don't know whether it's true or not. It's just what I was told at one time. Because I was telling them about a problem, and they gave me a big problem. So they couldn't do it. And I'm saying they can do it if they want to, but they're not going to do it. How can I answer that, Pete? No, uh, it's nothing, it's not in your hands. It's just to let you know what the council has been doing about the 10th Street that they were going to improve, to improve on. And they haven't even tried it because they've got holes in the, in the sewer line. They were laid in the 1930s. The sewer line, I mean, he has a power line. I see. And they were broken, so instead of having 10 feet they're going to fix, they got 15 now. That's what I was told. Well, of course, should, should I be elected, I would certainly look into that immediately. I'll be another, a busy boy. Another thing that we need, we need some law enforcement around here. We don't have that around here. We have the officers, but they don't do it. They're around the neighborhood where I live. There's a poor about every week, every other week there's a poor. I've seen as many sea cars down there. And they stay there 15, 30 minutes. And they all drive off with nobody. What, what you want for? <coughs> you go to drive a restaurant, there's a restaurant. You drive here in town, they drive in and around in town. But you never see anybody doing anything. Down the highway, that we got the oil trucks, they go 50, 60 miles here on the city limit. And do you see when the highway? No, you don't. But you come to a restaurant, sure not. You see, the <laughs> <laughs> And the reason I know because I'm, I happen to have a known barber shop here in town, and they used to come to throw by. But they never stop at the barber shop. When I came to this town, I had a problem coming to this town. And now, I'm the only one that got a barbershop in town now. Pete, you're wonderful. Not so hard, but we're going to get it all. Maybe we need to get it cheap, bro. That's what we need. We need somebody that we can respect them because they're doing the job. Why do you want to see some business officers if they're not doing the job? That's all. Thank you, Pete. Thank you. Yeah, going back to that, uh, that answer or that question, um, yeah, I would um, support it. Because, there's, uh, you know, I, I, I do believe that. The more activities we have in Floresville as far as like parks and um, trails and stuff like that, um, I do believe that husband and wife should come out and walk because that's when you can talk and, 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 and just let your mind wander, especially if you had right after an argument, you know? You know don't, don't have the police come and arrest you, just have them go and uh, um, walk and stuff like that. Yeah, I would, I would support that. I definitely would. those leaks. Well, I heard you say you don't got no money. They need to go raise it. Raise the money. So you're lost, man. They ain't going to get nothing done because uh, those leaks are going to have to live with them until you get another member and get something work done in the city council. And that's, that's sad. Since that's a sad state of affairs as we speak. So, and about that study, damn, uh, windows, uh, windows always open to look at other things that we need to do. You need to it wouldn't be proper if you didn't look at other things. And that's how this that's how this government gets run, man. So there are two things I've asked that you've got on an agenda when you're elected. Mm -hmm. There's two yes, things sir. I've asked that you're gonna put on an agenda when you're elected. Good. Yeah. And I'll try. Okay. We're gonna break my promises. Now work with y'all. Work. Yeah. We have further questions? In which case, I'll pose a further question. This relates to finances. Floresville is the county seat of Wilson County. And as the county seat obviously influences the county's other cities. The current insolvency, and there's a plan to address that, we all know, um, and the city's financial issues impact not only the financial ratings of the city, but the other entities in our county, the other cities, our utilities, 
the county zone, and other entities. How do you plan to steward the city's finances if elected? And we'll start with Frank. I think that would be the main thing that we would start working on, the financing end of the business of Floydville. Because that's the main thing that, you know, that the people are opposing about. So, the insolvency, I don't know too much about the numbers, what they're, what they're involved, but, you know, studying it and looking at it and getting input from, this, you know, from other people that are in the financial area, get it back from them. And then, we, you know, we, we work on trying to hammer it out uh, something that, that would be a workable plan. And, and that's how you really deal with this issue, that we have to confront it, because it's not going to go away. You said in about two years, the storm's going to be coming up. Where's the money going to go from? We have to look for it. We have to find it, bottom line. So that's all I have to say about that. This is just good. Ask that again, then, Ed, would you? Ask that again. The simplest form is how do you plan to steward this, the city's finances? The city of Floresville is the county seat, and its, its finances influence and impact the financial ratings and the standing of all the other entities in the county. And how would you be a steward of the city's finances? Well, that goes back to a lot of things we've already talked about in, in regards to planning, revenue streams, and where the money's going to come from to pay for, for different things. We, we've got to we've got to all work together on this. And it's and it's not just the city, it is the county also. When uh, when I was going to to different meetings across the state for the Main Street program and also for the city manager program and EDC meetings across the state. It was interesting to see how other towns conduct themselves and how they how they put planning together. And uh, that's what I'd like to bring to the table. One of, one of the neat things about the Main Street program that uh, I never forgot when we were in training, they said, okay, this is one of the rules of Main Street. This is one that is just paramount. If you see something that's working real well in another town, steal it. <laughs> well, we, we talked about finances and we've been talking about finances and I think that uh, the, the accountant uh, that we have here in Floresville and Ms. Turner, I think they're doing a pretty good job at it. And before I say anything or whatever the case is, I would at first check see how flat the tires are in this in this city uh, before we can start making changes. Because it, yes, it's, it's all about planning and, and, and strategy. And that's what that's what I would have to look into. I mean, we, we can point fingers all day long, but. I'm sure that the city uh, manager and uh, the county, uh, they probably could tell, you know, have a better idea. And I really couldn't, I don't have an answer to that right now. I'll get back with you on that. One last question. You're all seeking election to the city council, the governing body of the city of Florida. It also holds or, or has several sub-corporations that also help operate the city, among them the Floresville Economic Development Corporation and the Foray Corporation, which was organized to govern the events and the business of the Floresville Event Center. Please explain your understanding of how those bodies, the council, the FEDC, and the Foray Corporation work and how you intend to work with those sub bodies. And we'll start with Mr. Robles. Um, 
I would do it just like, uh, again, back going to the military. I would have to take a look at what they're doing, how they're doing it, and if, it, if it's working positive, I'll support it. If it's not working positive, then I would suggest it, but I won't tell them to change it because obviously they have a, uh, that's why they have um, so many people, it's like Parks Foundation, I'm in Parks Foundation, and, and we have a lot of things going on, and, and people come and stand in their meetings, but you know, a lot of them don't understand what we're, you know, what we're trying to get at, and that would be the same thing with EV, uh, FEDC or 4A. You know, they, they're, they're doing um, certain things, and they already have their vision, and if it's if it's going to work, I, of course I would you know support them and work with it. But if if I saw that you know they made a decision or it's not making no sense, then I would question it a little bit more because that's just the way I operate. I don't like to go in there and tell, tell me you know what if you're going north you need to go east or go west. You know I want to see you know what, what's what's happening, how big the wheels are already turning because it takes a lot of time and you know there's a lot of people. That or, or these uh, foundations, and, and uh, you know they don't even live in the city, and they put a lot of time and effort into these things right here, and, and that's what bothers me that a lot of people in Floresville either they don't want to get involved or they're too busy or whatever the case is or they just don't want to be part of the city, but that's why we need to work to bring them in to, so so we can hear them out because we you know. FEDC can you know, they'll be doing some things and then when it happens, they, they say, well, that's not what we wanted. And I'll give you a prime example. The school tax office there, you know, for the longest I wanted a bowling alley there. And what are they doing? I don't know what they're doing, but I don't agree with it. And if I'd have known that's what's gonna happen, why do we wanna put something like that and cause problems for the school has man? Runaway kids, um, fellas come in big trucks, traffic, you saw what happened yesterday? And that's what I'm saying, these are things that I would get involved with FEDC or 4A, trying to you know, see what, whether, or what direction they're going in and give them some help, or again, go back to the, to the computer or book and start studying what would be the best thing for them to do. That's what I have. Council members have a uh, great responsibility in regards to the 4A, 4B boards in helping them, helping them make decisions, everybody working together. It's part of this fabric of our society that we talk about in, in these euphoristic terms, but the, uh, the progress, the, the uh, future of the city, it all revolves around the decisions made by all these different boards and people. And that's, that's what I'm talking about, I think, that I would, I would bring to the table as being able for us all to learn to work together. The, the 4B has, has done some magnificent things over the years. I've, I've really enjoyed watching the progress of that. The, uh, <clears throat> the uh, building of the trail was, was pretty much a 4B effort because Main Street didn't have any funds for such a thing. And when I found the depot, they paid for going out to the ranch between here and Pleasanton and having it moved back into town, having it restored. Look at it today. Fantastic. But those are the things that we can all do as a team. What did you, uh, what did you reference those two things as a corporation? The Floresville Economic Development Corporation and the 4A Corporation. They're corporations? Yes, sir. And they, they act within the city? The city has control of them? Yes, sir. They're actually funded by, they're funded by the city. Sales tax person. If they have their own, uh, their accounts, that they're not responsible to any, to, to the board? They are to responsible the to the city, yes, sir. To the city? Yeah, I know that, they, do, I don't know, they, did they receive the, that quarter cent sales tax? Yes, sir. And they have, they have, they receive all that money from that quarter cent sales? And that's one of the, the acts that they enacted 
board is acting on them, right? Yes. See, I don't know too much about what's going on with them, but they, yeah, uh, I know they they purchase land and, and, and they develop it, right? And that's good. Uh, I think that there's some land that, well, anyway, I've seen some of the lands that they bought and purchased, and some of it's been almost developed and not quite developed yet. So there is a lag in some of those areas. But to my understanding, it's all about it, the workings of the city. That's part of it. So you have to find out, you know, how things to improve, improve those two, two corporation boards and, and uh, to uh, see if the, they can be done and if they can do any other uh, better, uh, get, it going, get it greased up and get it going again to work bring more jobs and maybe uh, helping the citizens of Floresville. And that's what it's really interesting in doing is helping the citizens of Floresville. You know, and the, the, the job market, the, uh, the, uh, the training the kids or whatever it takes, you know, using that, that going into that aspect of using the board of corporations for that. So that's all going to be uh, addressed from there and to get it going again. And that's my answer to you. At this time, we'll give each of you an opportunity to just share with those gathered here why they should vote for you, and then we'll close proceedings for the evening. So, Mr. Ramirez, yes, we'll start with you. If you would like to tell everyone. Oh, what I, what I, no, okay. Uh, it's just like everything else, it's always hard to come before it. Uh, it's always hard, you know, for me. But after it, I always feel it was a worthwhile thing. And that's what I feel about this. And it's input from the citizens that we're going to get, we're going to find out where they are and where we can go from there. And their input is, is, is crucial to us working and working and uniting this, this city of ours and to moving it into the, the next 20 years with this everything that else is going on. And I think that's one of the most important things. And uh, I don't have any interest. My, the position of this position is that doesn't mean anything to me. It's about serving the people of Florida and getting, some, um, getting us in the right. Doing something at servitude, and everybody should do that. Everybody should have that using their gifts in, in, in a good way. So that's where I'm at. You know, it's like when you understand, you're going to make a stand. So the gifts that I've been bestowed on with, I'm going to try to put them in action. And I think that's a, it's, it's a worthy cause. Thank you all. taught me how to fix things. Well, I like to create things, too. I had a very successful art career all my life. I've done a lot of designing here. I designed the, met the uh, memorial out here for the veterans. The list is extensive. And this is my, probably my last chance to really get things done. And, I, and I'd like the opportunity to work together, all of us working together. Working with Eric, working with Mr. Guerrero, working with the city manager, working with the mayor, staff, county. I think we can we can do some great things and make make Floresville really nice. Thank you. I'm asking for everybody's support because uh, I, I do believe that a, a mayor's position is not really that important, but it's like the mediator, the guy that stands between the city or the community and the city council and the city manager. And, and I do believe that if you have a mayor that's working full time and wants to run the city, it's hard to do because you, you're, you're constantly working over here. It's almost like living. Two relationships, a Bernie and 
handle both ends, and and and, and it's just it, it's just overwhelming. And that's one of the reasons I'm I'm, I'm running, you know, to 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 help the city, Miss Turner, the city council, and again be able to be, uh, be able to talk to the, the community and and if things need to be done or whatever. I mean, because I, I think it's very important. It's like the gentleman said here. I, I want to be able to go to the different um, church, different religions, um, the police department, and see what they have in mind, how they want, you know, because there's a lot of drugs here in the city of Floresville. You know? And I have my, my, my ways of thinking and catching these guys, but I don't know what they have in mind on how they want to catch these guys. And, and, and I think that there's solutions to all this stuff, but the thing is that if you haven't been nowhere and you try to run the city as a mayor and you don't have no knowledge of how to run it, the city's going to be flat-footed. And, and that's, that's what I'm thinking. Because you know what? I think if I was the chief of police, I would take all these police officers and just on once a week with a radio and just listen to what goes on in the neighborhood. And they'll find out what's going on in the neighborhood. They don't have to be in cars, just it's in different spots. And then people are going to start catching on to it and say, you know what? It might be a police wearing in the dark with a radio. We can't be bring, bringing drugs in here. We can't be, you know, it's like the slot machines that they were trying to avoid on. I totally disagree on that, you know? Why do we want to get caught in cash 22 when the law says that we can't gamble? Why do we want to do that? Why do we want to, you know, because we don't want to ship it to another state because it's about money. Let's, you know, let's, let's get smart about this thing. And that's what I'm saying. You know, I'm sorry that some people feel different. I'm sorry that people feel that, you know, um, yeah, and I'm not talking bad about nobody, but you know what? We have to see, put a bigger vision when you're put in charge. Have a better judgment. And, and put yourself in the situation of the people that live in here in Floresville that, you know, there's a lot of people here that, 